Hi, welcome to the D2 Incorporated YouTube channel. My name is Dean Fougere and today I will be walking you through how to install a JF1A inline conductivity sensor and how to power up the conductivity loop. This is the JF1A inline conductivity sensor and today I'll be showing you how to put it into the product line and hook up the conductivity loop. Just a short disclaimer before you begin, please refer to your local codes and regulations for this installation. The first step in the process is to use the grease that comes supplied with the JF1A sensor, normally taped onto this nut right here, and you want to squeeze the grease out of this nozzle here at the end onto the inside of this nut so that this nut doesn't lock and you can install the nut and uninstall the nut for its annual conductivity calibration for the sensor. Once the lock collar has been lubricated, you want to slide the slide down to the end of the sensor until it reaches the sensor tip, which will stop it from sliding any further. Once you've moved the slide to the end of the sensor, you want to lock the lock collar in place by twisting clockwise. For purposes of this demonstration, we've set up this little pipeline diagram with a JF1A adapter already into the pipe. The only thing missing from this that you would have in the field is below this adapter here, you would have a ball valve that you could open and shut. And right now the ball valve would be shut so that fuel wouldn't be coming up through the adapter and leaking out. So here's the pipeline that we're going to be inserting the JF1A sensor into. So now the slide is all the way down at the bottom and you want to insert the sensor into the adapter and once it's inside the adapter, you want to screw the lock collar into place until it's tight. In order to insert the JF1A sensor to the proper depth inside of the pipeline, you need to measure from this nut right here down the sensor shaft to where these holes are because you want these holes to be flush with the inner wall of the pipeline. So on this sensor, we measure that. And this is a standard stem on this sensor. However, we do provide custom length stems. So you should always measure this in the field at, before doing this installation. You can see on this sensor, we are 22 inches. So when we install the sensor, we need this nut to be 22 inches from the inner wall of the pipeline so that these holes are flush with the inner wall of the pipeline. Now that we have the JF1A sensor installed into the JF1A sensor adapter, which is connected to the ball valve, which is connected to the pipe, we're now ready to move the sensor tip down through the ball valve into the piping structure and then have the sensor tip even with the inner wall of the pipe. Loosen the white lock collar here and then lower the sensor tip down into the pipeline to the desired spot so that you can get accurate measurements. Once we have the JF1A sensor attached to the JF1A adapter, we need to use our measurement from before in order to insert the sensor down to the correct depth. Once it's inserted down to the correct depth, you lock it by twisting the white lock collar clockwise into place as we have done here. We've inserted the sensor now to the correct depth and we can measure that by going from this nut down to the 22 inches as marked before. The only thing we have to account for on top of the 22 inches is the thickness of the pipe itself so that the sensor is actually flush with the inner wall of the pipe as we can see we've done here. If we look inside, which you can't do in the field, you can see that the sensor tip 
the holes in the sensor tip are flush with the inner wall of the pipe. That's exactly perfect. That's ideal how you want the sensor to sit in the product line so that the fuel can throw, flow through those little holes and the sensor tip is not completely across the product line so that anything flowing through the sensor doesn't accidentally knock the sensor tip off. So that's exactly how you install it. You want to measure it before and then install it to meet that measurement as we have done here. You have the sensor tip at the perfect location for your pipeline. You want to tighten this white lock collar into place by twisting clockwise until you can't twist anymore and that should lock the sensor tip in place. And now you're ready to go ahead and make your electronic field connections. As you can clearly see, every one of these units comes with two covers. One side is a wiring cover and it says open this side to make field connections. And please do not open this when the unit is energized. You would want to turn the power supply off before opening the side to make or disconnect field connections. The other sticker on here, because this unit has a non-standard 4 to 20 MA output, uh, it's marked on here what that non-standard output is. The other side is just a basic cover, not a wiring cover, and it says, do not open calibration void. So you would never open the side because there's no wiring connections to be made, and you will void the calibration if you open this cover. So please just open this side that says, open this side to make field connections. Now the header here can sometimes get a little jammed up. So if you can't twist this open with your hand, it's acceptable to use a wrench insert in the groove here and in here, like so, to twist it to gain extra leverage. Once you've opened this field connection side up, you'll notice that the sensor has three terminal blocks. This terminal block is the RS-232 output that connects it to the computer for data output, which we're not concerned with today. This terminal block, the top one here with three, is the temperature terminal block for the temperature loop, which we're also not concerned with today. And the last but not least here is the conductivity terminal block, which is the 4 to 20 MA outputs for the conductivity loop. And that's the one that we're going to be focused on today. On the inside of the header that you take off of this half of the unit, we have put the wiring instructions themselves here. And also these power instructions can be found in the application notes for this unit inside your manual for the JF1A in the back in the app note section under power and ground requirements. The important part to note here is that these are polarity insensitive. So it doesn't matter which side you put as long as you have 24 VDC running into this terminal block on the bottom two spaces. And then that same VDC has to go back out and make a loop with the power supply. But the actual terminal settings are polarity insensitive. One little thing to note here is that these terminal blocks are actually snap off. So they snap right in the place and they come off very easily which makes installing the wires even easier. You just put the wires in through these holes here and then you screw them down into place. The next step would be to install the FM cable entry into the unit. So you can see here, this is an FM approved cable entry. And this would generally, in an FM approved environment, connect to a conduit. It can fit on either side of the sensor, depending on how your facility is. Um, they go right in through this here, which is where the wires would go in through. And then they come out through here. And generally, it's best to use uh, tweezers in order to get the wires out. And then you pull the wires out of there and install them into the terminal block. Okay, so. You want to go over here and you want to install the cable entry into the spot here on the side, on either side. Now 
Now we're ready to hook up the JF1A conductivity loop. In order to do that, you would want to already have this snap piece in place, or you could pull it out and connect it to the wires, but generally you'd have it in here. You'd run your four to 20 MA cables through here, and it doesn't matter so long as you use the bottom two spots uh, to put your VDC power loop in. So in this case, I already have this snap connection hooked up. As you can see, I have the 24 VDC running in and out of this. And over here is the power supply that's putting out 24 VDC. Because we're in a laboratory setting, I have this running to a resistance box, which is 250 ohms, but out in the field, you would have a sensing element that would take care of that for you. So you would not need to use a resistance box in the field, only in a laboratory setting. Once you have that set up, you run the po a positive polarity into this and then back out of this resistance box. And then you run your cable through the conduit, through here, and into the sensor head out like this, and you'd connect it right here as such. So once you've powered up the sensor with the 24 VDC power, if you want to check the voltage when the sensor is sitting in air, you should be getting 1.00 or very close to it uh, volts, which divided by 250 is four milliamps, which is the bottom end of the range because it's a four to 20 MA output. So you're looking at about four MA right there, which is exactly what it should be reading because the sensor tip is sh sitting in air right now. So that is all set up and that's how you check the voltage and that's how you fire up the conductivity loop on the JF1A inline sensor. Thank you very much for watching this video. I would like to remind you that there is a safe use and installation manual that should be referred to first and adhered to at all costs, and also an appendix on power and ground requirements. I will put the links in the description box to both of those items so that you can review them before attempting to install this unit in the field. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments, please subscribe to this channel, and please let us know if you have any questions or need any further assistance. Thank you and have a wonderful day.